they're talking about uh, intakes. And uh, what is it? Two two different types. Well, the one type of exterior and the three different interior intakes. So you Exterior. Oh, I was not considering the interior one intakes. I was considering them for reversibility mechanism. Outtakes? Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> so yeah, go for it. Uh, intake. Me? Yeah. Okay, so the intake we worked on are the green wheels on that one, um, which would be based, like, at the base of the robot and stay. So it wouldn't move with whatever other moving would unfold at the beginning of parts we have, correct. Um, so they run on two direct driving motors right now, and we didn't do the motors that would move them in and out because we didn't have the motors last time. Um, but they would hinge there. It worked pretty well, um, and we also decided then they could also, if they're like, on a joystick, we can use them to help hold the cube in when we're moving, so that's an additional pro um, of that. And we were going to do two, but one was plenty, so and we don't have to worry about belts or anything. So. I think that might be a good opportunity to use pneumatics. Just yeah. You get the la we, well, we were going off of what the calculator is in 2015, because Elise built those originally, because they had those like essentially pneumatics. the same thing, and they were pneumatic but driven, so we'll look at how yeah. Yeah. It, it might be easier. You basically have a retract and an out. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, and then you get the yeah. elastic of pneumatic by default. Yeah. So yeah. 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 They yeah. were our baby seal arms. <laughs> yeah, so that was just some like custom milling. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um catapult. Uh the interaction with the crate and the rolling off of it was more difficult to achieve than uh, balls at that. And so we weren't able to get significantly past where Percy's was able to reach. So it's not About reaching the five, seven foot. Eight. Yeah, it's not reaching, it's reaching only five. So we're not getting up to our target of seven. Um, it could happen maybe with some lots of tweaking, but it's not there right now. Or, 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 or at, <coughs> We could overcome it by adding more force. So that's more pneumatic cylinders or add some sort of surgical tubing or some springs in addition to the pneumatics potentially. Yeah. But, and a better cradle. And a, work more on the cradle. Yeah. Because, but it's not it's not to the seven right now. Yeah. Wheel shooter. All right, so right now we're getting probably what, four and a half feet or so I think. With bags. With, yeah, with bags. Um, so if we did want if we did want to continue, we could do some some class pros as well as doing some before to ramp it up to speed before it hits the um, more uh, geared up ones. So I don't know. I think we could hit seven, not too hard with all that, but I you know it's. It's got a long ways to go for that yet, so I don't know how much time well, we want. That looks like a pretty minimal yes. thing for hitting five feet with yes. tiny bag motors and a yeah. flexible. Yes, yes, <laughs> very fair. That very actually, fair. <laughs> that looks yeah. Okay. That looks better. Four, was that four and a half feet like straight up or how are you shooting that? We were shooting at what, like, like a, a Steep angle. Yeah. Like, yeah. like it was, it was, it was like, it was like yeah. 60, yeah. 60, was it, 70. Yeah. Was it the angle that it would be in the robot? About, about something like, close. Mm. It needs to be a little farther out. To be yeah, sure you'd want a yeah. little yeah. bit lower of an angle, but yeah. not by a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It can be almost. Because your shot geometry, yeah. your shot geometry when you're backed up when against the wall. That motion set that everybody thinks. Six. Six. Eight. Yeah. yeah, so you want 70, probably. Because, I mean, another thing with this is if we are going to be shooting it, we don't want to miss. Yeah. That's well, you so want a little bit less than your theoretical, but you want, like, 65. You want a nice yeah. gap, whatever. You want a nice range that you hit it. You want, yeah, you want a Because you can nice hit the back wall. Yeah. 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 yeah, it'd be great to have, if we do go with a shooter of any sort, that we just hit the back wall yep. and back up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Boom. Mm -hmm. Which I think is really the way to do a shooter this year because yeah, yeah, doing yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. no reason to yeah. do any other way. Yeah. 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 But then I guess we didn't, never mind. That's that's a common. 
Yeah. Okay. Come back um, later. So I did the reversibility first because it's what we would use for both the scissor list, lift and elevator. So I thought it'd be good to talk about it first before we go into those. So basically for both of these mechanisms, we would have some kind of carriage that goes way up in the air. So then we need to spit it out. So we did a few different things. We started with one more set of those green inch wheels, green inch, green wheels uh, on both sides. Um, that worked really well. The problem was space, um, so we, which could be more or less of an issue depending on what other design we go with. Um, so then we tried the polycord because obviously it's a lot thinner than those big wheels. Um, worked really well. Added those on for fun. It seemed to give it more direction. <coughs> with just the polycord, it was kind of wobbling out, but the wheels really helped shoot it straight out. Also, we just used the polycord we had, so probably if we did it in real life, we would want it to stretch the full length of the box, which would further help guide it straight out. So I think um, either option would work. The one thing I'd point out is that we kind of have to have it a little bit off the ground because of the bearings and the um, shaft collar at the bottom, so then it might kind of conflict with intaking if it has to get over well, like a... Yeah. We'd have to ramp We'd it probably down. want it off the ground if we're lifting it anyways. Yeah. Uh, just to have a secure grip on it. Yeah. So that I so, guess is something we have to talk about yeah. in the future would be a ramp down. But anyways, that's that. Um works pretty well. We can talk about I guess depending on which of these we go with, we can decide how much space would be an issue. Scissor left. So I guess we could give you a live demo. <laughs> what we have so far. It's been heavily modified so it doesn't work as well as it once did. Yep. So, you know, extends like that. We did have the supports uh, on the outsides, like out here, but then we decided it might be helpful if we could use similar to the reversibility mechanism and just attach it on the inside. Currently, we just guessed at a inch to make the width inside, which is 13 inches, which won't work currently, but right now I was just seeing it, how stable it is, side to side and forward and back, and um, yeah, put it up high enough. Uh, so it's decently stable, um, especially forward and back. Um, you know, uh, it's slightly weaker here. But the main thing is this way if we are going you know, forward and back like that way. Uh, so in this current configuration, we'd probably want the long robot. Um, and what, what would be the extension mechanism? How would you expand and contract it? Uh, I would say pneumatics, probably a pneumatic cylinder on the bottom. Unless you want some medium height for the switch. Do we have lead screws? No. That would be so. <laughs> yeah. Use lead screws to do this exact same thing like four, three, four years ago on my team. That was yeah. The way to do it. That's know? the that's that's the correct way to do it. But yeah, I didn't think it was that. I didn't think it was that. I didn't think it was that expensive though. But well, it's also how to do it in three days. Yeah. There's an accessibility thing. There's a yeah. sourcing issue in terms of those because I'm not sure. Yeah, we're, we're I was more or less asking those. if we have that. Yeah. Stock. Yeah. I feel like I feel like the vibe is if we don't have it in stock, we're not doing it. Yeah. So uh, if we did go check. with this, I would recommend one by one, and then when it folds down, it should be only about five inches, rather than it could be much lower if we use one by one. Okay. So I I spent time working on CAD and doing math. Um, we can show you that, but I'll talk first, I guess, because everybody else talked. I want to talk. Um, yeah. yeah, elevators are kind of a proven thing, so um, uh, I don't think we really needed to prove that elevators work. Um, elevators work. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Um, they work. Um, so the, the bigger concern here was like space and practicality. Uh, so I went primarily with a modified design that I found online, um, ended up going up to three stages because two stages was not enough within our height constraints. Um, interestingly enough, uh, three stages actually doesn't give you 
that much more height after you take into account all the extra stuff that takes up space on the top or bottom, just because sort of like the, mm -hmm. the, the overhead, if you will. Yeah. Um, so originally we were looking at like 102 inches of stroke here. Um, but after adding some of the like hardware, like you'll notice at the bottom, there's like big gaps in between them that significantly lowers the amount of stroke that you have. That can all be dealt with by just attaching these in different ways by making gussets instead of using um, bars at the corners to attach them. So if we really need to, we could potentially get 102 degree or 102 inches of stroke here. We don't need 102 inches of stroke. That's a little over. What's the eight. current stroke? The current stroke of this design, um, if I measured it correctly, was Is it constrained 78 correctly? inches, and we it? need 76. Um, and that's with um, that's with the nope. anchor points of this at this current distance apart, or uh, nine inches, ten inches apart. Uh, yeah, no, it's not constrained to do that. So you have to drag them separately if you want it. <laughs> Um, however, we can even make this smaller, definitely, uh, so we could even get every inch that you make this smaller, you get three more inches of stroke. Mm -hmm. So just by making this one inch smaller, that 78 would go all the way up to 91, which now we're five inches above the bottom, uh, five inches above the highest point that the um, basket sort of edge will ever be at which is plenty enough. Is that, um, and that would probably be what I would do in this case. I would probably extend that. The one thing is when you drag these up, another thing you need to take into account is the overlap there. So I took that into account um, when I was coming up with those. So like, it'll never be that far extended because it'll be yes, within so about nine inches or eight inches of carriage. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah. Um. <laughs> you could just add a couple. Distance. What are we? Yeah, that's too much for me. I'm just thinking. Have we done any looking at uh, what the center of gravity looks like with that full extension? Um, no, I have not. The one okay. sort of, I guess, reason I'm not too worried about that is because <coughs> that is going to be at the end boundary. The one sort of downside of this is that that center box that's moving, that final carriage is only 16 and a half inches wide, which is definitely not wide enough to fit that inside of it. So that's going to sort of have to be, you know, yay, yay big and sort of have things that come out and then attach to it. So that's going to be hanging on the edge. What that does mean, though, is that this mechanism going up and down is going to be pretty close to the center of the bot, uh, which will probably help alleviate any center of gravity. Does it concerns. still require it to be... I'm not. I'm not worried as far as like where the point is statically. I'm worried about when I'm moving. When we're moving around oh. with it, how yeah. floppy are we going to be with a wide wheelbase? Yeah, you're worried about like the height of the gravity. Uh, yeah, I'm worried about it being. I'm worried. I'm worried about putting something like that eight feet in the air. Yeah, I, I would say that that is that's a problem with this or yeah, and any any any, any way of getting there. that up yeah. in the air really. And I think the solution to that is just simply put as little as you can in the air. So that's more well, yeah. That's more with that, I think. But, um, yeah. I mean, to answer your question, no. I have no yeah. idea. Okay. As my engineering teacher would say, that's currently cottage cheese because I didn't tell it what it was. We told it it was aluminum, but it's Did still you? 90 pounds. Oh. Yeah, um, it's 90 pounds. Solid aluminum weighs a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Solid bar stock aluminum. So how are these I support that. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, also, uh, I didn't do it on the final carriage, uh, but if you look at, like, if you look down, those little pegs, those are bearings, those are these, um, and those are actually the correct size. Um, the bearings that we have this year to use are much smaller than these, uh, which is actually a benefit for a few reasons. Um, just, at, at least they're all the same size. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's an improvement. Um, so yeah. And then actuation? Uh, actuation, this would be a cascading uh, elevator. So that. not like that. This is a it continuous be, elevator. Be, but uh, similar idea, right, is that yeah. at the end of the day, somewhere on the top of this, you've got, whether it's a pulley or just a little strip of Delron so that it doesn't, you know, 
rub directly on the aluminium. You've got a strap or a nylon cord that comes down, and somewhere in the base of the robot, you've got a winch. The other nice thing about that, you can put that wherever you want in the base of the bot. Um, it can pull straight down, it can pull back in an angle, it doesn't matter, just pull this string and it goes up. Uh, the one sort of downside of having a cascading uh, lift is that because this is three stage, that means that the tension and force required to pull that is going to be three times the weight of one of these crates, which I'm not really worried about, um, considering the weight of these crates. Uh, but that the is something to keep in I was going to say, yeah, along with a lot more the and stuff, but... It's how much do you think that weighs? How much do you? You're, you're only using bag motors, right? On there, yeah. yeah. Because because the output isn't going up. The only thing that's going up is two bag motors and some tubing. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that, I don't think is going to weigh. Well, the times three. I mean, it, it would yeah. just all yeah. add up. How yeah. much? Uh, and if if times three does yeah. prove to be a problem, we can <laughs> convert it to a continuous, um, or we can even do a little freak hybrid where like the first two stages are continuous and after that it's cascading because um, then you get you know a few benefits of both that's not unheard of how much did you figure was the max stroke with a two stage <clears throat> with a two stage um oh geez i i don't quite remember what that what i came to with that what bounding um, box does this one fit in how tall is it overall right now it is at um Right now it's at 48 inches. This so is on the this entire plus drive train. 48 plus drive train. Yeah. Uh, right now this, in its current form, is at 48 inches. However, this bottom bit right there can be chopped off. That isn't necessary because this bottom base is going to be attached to the chassis, so it doesn't need that. So that cuts off two inches off the bottom. Um, and it would add two for wheels. So you're, yeah, you're so like 48 inches. Yeah, is this thing's going to be about 48 inches tall. 